EPA WA Meteorologist Bobby Marchant here with your outlook for February 14th, 2019. For your Valentine's Day Thursday, we have high pressure moving off the eastern seaboard here. That's going to get winds in here from the west-southwest, and that will get temperatures up today. So temperatures will be in the 40s for many locations across the region today. And that slop that we had on uh, Monday night, Tuesday, slow sleet, freezing rain, lions, tigers, bears, whatever, is going to start to melt today in earnest. So it uh, won't completely disappear because we had so much sleet involved with that. So I don't think it's going to completely disappear, but you're going to put a, a pretty big, big dent into that today as uh, temperatures start to climb north of the 40 degree mark and then once we have uh once we get past today we have our uh, into tonight we have an increase in clouds ahead of the next cold front that's going to come through kind of late night and early friday just with a few showers this is rain showers not uh, frozen variety but just very light so this is not uh not a big deal there's a few showers coming in late night uh, late after midnight into uh friday morning and it'll be very mild here on friday once this uh precipitation moves through i don't think it's an all-day thing maybe just the morning it looks like and then we have the cold front actual cold front moving through during the afternoon might be a leftover shower with that during the afternoon but it, not a big deal here as far as precipitation is concerned not as bad as it looked like it was a couple days ago it looked like we we're having a pretty good rainstorm coming in here and the models seriously backed off on that over the last uh, 48 hours or so so just a cold front passage not a real big deal temperatures will not be crashing behind the front but uh it will start to drop down into uh, near 30 degrees or just below freezing here on Friday night. And it's going to take its time getting there because we're going to be in the 50s on uh, during the day here on Friday. And then going back into about 30 degrees for the overnight low. After this point, the cold front moves through. We do have colder temperatures coming in here for Saturday. And we have a weak system that's off to our south. And we're going to have to watch this very closely because the GFS is this is the latest GFS run I'm showing you. It keeps everything south of the Mason-Dixon line. Uh, but this is still part of our coverage area. South Jersey, Delaware, eastern parts of Maryland, we uh, northern and eastern parts of Maryland. We watch this area as well. And uh, there could be some snow showers associated with this that could give you, you know, coating to an inch or inch or two, something like that, south of the Mason-Dixon line. There were also some models that brought this a little bit further north and got it right up to about I-76 and then going across central New Jersey. So our southernmost counties of Pennsylvania, you can't just turn your back on this either. Even though odds are the GFS says it stays south of the region, the European model brought it up to about that line that I just drew right there, which would include the southernmost counties of Pennsylvania uh, from uh, Franklin County all the way over to Philadelphia and then into central Jersey, Burlington, uh, places like that. So we'll keep a close eye on that just in case, but I think this is largely a southern area's deal. And again, according to an inch or two, it could be possible mainly on Saturday morning, but that could go into the early afternoon as well until this completely pulls away. Uh, on Saturday afternoon. So not a real big deal. We'll be colder here on Saturday across the rest of the region, maybe mostly cloudy because that system's in the vicinity. And then Sunday, we have another one right on its heels. Now this is being modeled differently as well. So this is, nothing's easy here, I'm telling you. It looks like a, another minor system coming in here, another coating to an inch or inch or two, maybe something like that in the interior. Uh, this is a marginal system with the temperatures. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see how this works out exactly. But I don't think it's going to be a big deal either way. Kind of a sheared out mess. And if you look at the European model today, it actually had uh, virtually nothing. It completely sheared out the northern edge of the system. So I don't expect much of this either way. Uh, so we'll get into the precipitation type breakdown and by area once we get further in the week. Because right now this is still models just guessing on what's going to happen with this. But I don't think it's going to be a big deal either way. Okay, then we get into Monday. We have uh, partly cloudy skies. And then Tuesday's going to start off partly cloudy. And then we're going to have an increase in clouds later in the day. You see all this mess down to the south here. Uh, again, the models, once you're getting beyond like three, four days, you're starting to guess a little bit. This was actually shown to come up the coast here and put a low out here and give a you know pretty decent snowstorm up until uh, today's runs. And now it's started to back off again, actually showing a system trying to cut and then redevelop another coastal or a coastal system here yeah a lot of different possibilities with this yet so i'm going to take a, a closer look at this once we get past these first two systems there's just too many systems in the way uh, for the models to resolve all these different features the idea here is we're going to have an active pattern continuing it just doesn't look like it's going to be anything big this uh this upcoming week maybe once we get to the middle of next week and we're dealing with this system right here and when if the models figure out exactly what this is going to do you know, whether it's going to be a snow to rain type thing, you have a cutting system, maybe a redevelopment here, 
Uh, it could be rain. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of different things that can go on with this. But this was actually one of our storm signals in our long-range forecast. And it's being modeled differently between the GFS here, which is running this evening. The European model ran today. It did have a cutting system as well up into the Ohio Valley, but it also developed a secondary low here. This is, so this is very similar to the system we just had. Here's the high pressure sitting up here over New England, pumping in the cold air. And uh, you had snow at the onset and, you know, maybe going over to some sleet, freezing rain, rain. Very similar to this last system we just had Monday night and Tuesday. Uh, so this is what the European model is suggesting. I'm not saying this is going to be correct either, but the whole idea here is there's a big difference in uh, exactly how this is being modeled down the road. So this is just one of those stay tuned and we'll keep you informed type deals. Uh, right now, we're just focusing, focusing on the next system, which is the cold front on Friday. Then we have that weak system of the south. How far north does that get? We don't think too far north, and it's weak either way. And then we have that Sunday system to worry about before this one. So there's a bunch of different things going on before this, before we can uh, get a handle on what's going to happen in the middle of next week. But that's your next seven days. Just know that there are systems in the vicinity that are going to be producing something. We just got to figure out exactly what we're going to do in the breakdown of such over the next couple of days. I'm EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That is your outlook for February 14th, 2019. Have a great Thursday. Happy Valentine's Day.